Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White and today's lesson is on batteries. We're going to talk about standard reduction potentials and how to calculate standard cell potentials for electro electrochemical cells or batteries. And then we'll talk about how to calculate cell potentials under non-standard conditions using the Nernst equation. We'll talk about two types of batteries. First of all, primary cells, which are designed to be used once and then thrown away, and then secondary cells, which are rechargeable. Many electro, uh, electrochemical potentials are listed in tables, for example, in the CRC tables of uh, chemistry and physics, for half reactions. They're usually written as reductions, but they can be turned around and written as oxidations. And when you do that, you have to remember to uh, reverse the algebraic sign of the reduction potential to get the oxidation potential. All these potentials are listed relative to the standard hydrogen electrode, which is the reduction of two protons in aqueous solution to hydrogen gas, which is arbitrarily assigned a reduction potential of 0, 0.00 volts. Anything that's uh, more easily reduced is given a higher reduction potential, positive, and anything that is less easily reduced or more easily oxidized is uh, given a negative reduction potential or a positive oxidation potential. So let's look at the silver zinc cell. Here at the cathode, we have silver ions being reduced to silver metal, and at the anode, uh, zinc metal being oxidized to zinc ions. Uh, we have the overall reaction, uh, which is balanced by multiplying the silver equation by 2. And then we have the reduction potential, the oxidation potential, and the sum of those two things is the overall cell potential under standard conditions. Remember that you don't multiply the reduction potential by 2 um, because of the stoichiometric coefficients, because the reduction potential is an intrinsic measure of thermodynamic driving force and doesn't depend on stoichiometric coefficients. As a reminder, we can calculate the delta G0 for this reaction as minus NFE0, and that's minus 301.3 kilojoules per mole, and the equilibrium constant for this reaction is 6.15 times 10 to the 52, which is just absolutely enormous. So under non-standard conditions, we can write uh, the Q for uh, this reaction, which is the ratio of thermodynamic activities or concentrations of products uh, relative to reactants. Uh, the delta G, we already know from a previous lesson, is delta G0 for the reaction plus RT log of Q. And we know that delta G is related, related to the electrochemical potential by this factor minus NF. Um, and so E cell is going to be equal to E0 cell minus RT over NF log Q. This is the Nernst equation, and it can be used to calculate the cell potential under non-standard conditions if the thermodynamic activities of the reactants and products are known. So, for example, if we allow the uh, silver zinc cell to run from standard conditions down to where the silver ion is depleted to 0.01 moles per liter and the zinc ion concentration has been enhanced to 1.49 moles per liter, then the cell potential, according to the Nernst equation, is 1.438 volts. Now don't forget to square the silver ion concentration in the denominator because the uh, stoichiometric coefficient uh, for silver in the balanced reaction is 2. And also don't forget that the number of electrons is 2, and so we have to use n equals 2 in the Nernst equation. So this potential uh, decreases from the standard potential of 1.56 volts down to 1.44 volts uh, in its depleted condition. And even though we have changed the concentration a lot, uh, the potential is decreased only by a small amount because the uh, cell potential is dependent on the logarithm of the uh, concentrations, which gives it a very modest uh, concentration dependence. So let's talk about lead-acid batteries like the one in your car. At the, at the anode, uh, lead is oxidized to lead sulfate. At the cathode, lead oxide is reduced to lead sulfate. And the lead sulfate sticks to the electrodes. And that's what makes a lead-acid battery rechargeable. The overall reaction is written here as lead plus lead oxide combining with sulfuric acid to make lead sulfate in water. And the overall cell potential is just a little over 2 volts. Now we can take six of these cells and connect them together in series to make a 12 volt car battery and that's exactly what's inside your car. The advantages of a lead acid battery are that 
uh, it's rechargeable and it has a very high power density so you can draw a huge amount of current to draw the, to uh, run the starter motor in your car for short periods of time and the disadvantages are that it has a lower low energy density because um, lead is very heavy and it also has uh, toxic materials lead and and uh, sulfuric acid and so all the states in uh, this country have very uh, uh, rigorous mandatory recycling programs to keep lead from lead batteries out of the environment. So let's suppose we discharge uh, one of these batteries from 12 volts down to 9 volts. That means each of the six cells has a potential of 1.5 volts and we can use the Nernst equation uh, to calculate the uh, product of uh, sulfate ion and hydronium ion concentrations to be 2.52 times 10 to the minus 19. And uh, now the major ion in solution actually is the bisulfate ion under these conditions. And so uh, we can use the Ka2 value for sulfuric acid to calculate the bisulfate ion concentration, which is approximately equal to the sulfuric acid concentration. And that would be 2.05 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter. So you actually have to de deplete the sulfuric acid uh, concentration to near zero uh, to get any substantial decrease in the volume voltage in the battery. So it, it, it turns out that uh, to measure the charge on a battery, it's much easier to use a hydrometer to measure the concentration of sulfuric acid inside the fluid than it is uh, by measuring the potential. Now let's talk about a zinc air battery. This is an interesting type of uh, primary cell. It's used only once. It's not rechargeable, uh, but it's very inexpensive. It has a very high energy density of about 220 watt hours per kilogram. It has a great shelf life. Uh, it loses about 2% of its effectiveness per year when it's sealed, and it's used extensively as button batteries in watches and hearing aids and so forth. It's also under development uh, for use in experimental electric cars. So at the anode, uh, we see that zinc metal is oxidized to zinc oxide, and that occurs uh, in uh, particles of zinc that are dispersed in potassium hydroxide and water. At the cathode, we have an air cathode uh, on this particular type of battery, and um, that reduces O2 from the air to hydroxide ions. And the overall reaction is zinc metal combining with oxygen from the air to make two moles of zinc oxide. The overall cell potential under standard conditions is 1.66 volts. Now one of the amazing things about the zinc air battery is that the potential on the battery is essentially constant throughout, throughout its entire life. And then it just drops to zero at the end when the zinc is finally exhausted. And that's because in the overall reaction, uh, almost everything has a constant thermodynamic activity. The zinc, zinc metal is constant because it's a solid. Zinc oxide is likewise a solid and so it has constant thermodynamic activity and uh, the oxygen is taken from the air and the partial pressure of oxygen in the air is constant and so um, everything is constant about this battery because the hydroxide that's generated at the uh, cathode is actually used at the anode in uh, the same proportion. So the overall cell potential under these non-standard conditions only depends on the fact that the partial pressure of oxygen in air is 0.21 bar, and so the overall cell potential is 1.65 volts, which is just very slightly less than 1.66, which is the standard cell potential. Next time, we're going to talk about corrosion, and we'll talk about the reaction mechanisms that lead to corrosion, and we'll talk about strategies for preventing corrosion in things like bridges.